Uh, welcome to the Islam and Finance Show, where we uh, explore the intersection between Islamic principles and modern finance. And uh, we basically empower you with insights to navigate the business world ethically and effectively. Uh, this show is brought to you by Hijaz Finance, an Islamic financial institution that supports you with savings, credit and investment uh, for you to be financially free. And all this is done with halal programs or it is done under the you know, guiding of or the guidance of Quran and the Hadith. Uh, Hijaz Finance is located at Conrad Plaza along Nasa Road. You can find us on the different social media platforms for any updates around Hijaz Finance or Islamic Finance in general. You can as well check out the website on www.hijazfinance.com uh, for you to get to read more about what we do and how we do it. And as well, you can download the app for you to be able to get one of our accounts, either a savings account uh, or you know, uh, find programs for credit. This is on your Google Play Store or your Apple Store and you can download the Hijaz Finance app and start from there. So uh, today we are delving into a topic as usual. We talk about finance and business. Lately we've been talking lots about startups and still today we're going to understand how to design, how to develop and retain talent for your startup. Uh, in studio, we are joined by Mr. Mtebi Alawi, the CEO of Eurosat Group of Companies, and he's going to be taking us through the session. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kindly say your uh, salam to the viewers and we'll get into Alhamdulillah, it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thumma salatu wa salam, Sayyidina Abibana Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Salam TV, we are so glad to be here again this week to delve into uh, the theme of today, developing and retaining talent for our businesses, our small and medium uh, businesses, or what we may call startups. Uh, as we shall be uh, deep diving into it, uh, we are going to be talking a lot more about different aspects today. Alhamdulillah. Uh, you understand that in business, as entrepreneurs, uh, the person you bring into your business is very crucial. And we've been talking about uh, how to you know, bring these people on board, the co-founders, building uh, a team beyond co-founders. So within this team, how do we, let's, let's start right away. How do we develop? How do we cite the talent? And how do we retain it? Yeah, thank you so much uh, for uh, bringing up such a, a good discussion to start with uh, in our show today. Uh, uh, as we make a recap from last time's discussion, yeah. we say a number of uh, aspects as to why uh, the, the, the business needs to have people there to do certain things, people to have different skills, and people to commit to it. Yeah. And in this aspect, we are, we are a little bit are focusing on the founders. Yes. Uh, but remember, uh, we said that these founders uh, might not be originally uh, the number we think. And there is need, you know, to, 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 to bring or to attract other people to join the founders to do the entire work that is needed. But, uh, the, 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 the kind of approach used for a startup is a little bit, you know, funny and complex. It's, Why? It's, is, it, it's, is it because we've not yet gotten clear? Or yeah, it's a messy problem that, you know, somebody cannot just come out and say this is the solution for it. Okay. And it really deserves messy uh, kind of solutions to be provided so that you can navigate through uh, having the right talent but again uh, move your startup to another level okay. so uh, first of all it's not a silver blade that it is easy that you are going to have people who have enough talent you know to work with you 
Yeah, um, you see, it's it's normally a point of. I have my friend. He he's good at uh, he's good at accounting. He's mm. good in uh, maybe a uh, sales mm. marketing. Then mm. I I can just call them to bring them on board, um, I- even if not as co-founders, maybe as employees or volunteers. Mm. Yeah. So uh, is is it the case or? Now uh, here. When we talk about retaining talent, developing talent for your business, yeah. it, it, it brings so much of the efforts of the founders to really build up an environment that is going to nurture talent, that is going to develop new talent, and that is going to attract other talent. So it requires a proper kind of leadership from the founders themselves where they need to bring a lot of kind of inspiration to the people they are working with. They need to to be inspired. The people we are working with need to be inspired. So the the, the team leaders or the founders need to be uh, people who can inspire others they should always Whoa. bring back that warmth huh? okay into the startup to show people that guys please we are moving this direction yeah. we need to push this we need to push this there shouldn't be people who are just there uh, who just give up when things are not going well huh? they should be people who inspire others so that when they see them they also gain the warmth to do more for the startup so the bottom line of whatever discussions we shall we shall we shall have today uh, regarding developing and retaining talent yeah. is gonna be so much uh, and underlying on the efforts of the founders well wow. um, when you talked about inspiration and the leadership does that mean that someone must have experience in leadership for them to to be able to inspire you you find that we have people on the team that are maybe aggressive you find that we have people on the team that are too soft mm. how how do you build around a culture to uh, facilitate for all those different traits yeah um business Modern business yeah. is all about leadership. Okay. Like we said, you need to inspire the people you are with. Uh, when we go back to our first uh, programs, we had somewhere where we had one founder coming up with an idea but attracting other co-founders to come. Yeah. These are the leadership skills we are talking about. The ability to inspire other people the ability to attract other people, the ability to convince them to join the vision is what we call leadership. So uh, we want to see here leaders who are good at having the skills of bringing up the human relations. How do you really relate with others as a founder? Regardless of their tribe, regardless of their tribe, regardless of their age, regardless of their color, regardless of their background, how do you relate with them? So it means that uh, actually a business founder or a business leader yeah. is actually a person who is supposed to have good human relationship skills. Does this mean uh, not only to the clients? Okay. Not only to partners or investors or what, but even to the fellow team members. Oh, I've heard in a certain uh, organization where they communicate that the members of the organization are the first clients. Exactly, exactly. Because remember, as we are doing what we call the product development, yeah. a product development is where you have a collection of ideas, eh? that are really going to make your product superb to solve a customer's problem. Yeah. So if your team, part of your team cannot behave like customers, you know, to relate with a product like customers, this actually means that you cannot develop a good product for the customers. 
So what we mean here is that the leader, yeah. the business leader, is supposed to be at good at human relations, is supposed to be an inspiration guy. People, someone who people look at, or young people, whether older people, when they look at him, they really see the company going somewhere. We don't want to see somebody who is just ever there, you know, silent and a little bit, you Asking know. Asking for files. Every time, every time he's just worried and, you know. Yeah. No, why, why do you need to be worried as a founder? There is a lot that is there to worry, for, to, worry to worry about. But I mean, your team should also get confident and should also uh, get the hope from you. So we need you to come up and inspire them. We need you to relate that to them well. But keeping in mind that all these things are happening, but it requires time. It's time. Yeah. You need to give time for each of your team members to see where they're growing, where they, how they are growing, okay. where are they going, where are they, uh, at what stage are they, so that you can easily relate to them at different stages they are. Does that mean that you have to present yourself as the HR of the company at you know at that stage? Like, the HR officer. Like we said, yeah. for a startup, the structures in a startup are a little bit funny. More so a fresh startup. Uh, I mean you can't you can't really start by employing a human resource person. But it's you, the founders or the co founders that have really come up to team up with the different specific skill sets. So one of you should be able at relating with other and people, employees and other employees, employees yeah. the clients themselves. One of you should be able to, you know, relate with the external activity. And for a person who is meant to be a CEO, these are some of the things we always want to see happening with him. Because the eyes are so much on him everywhere. The employees are looking at him. The clients are looking at him. Yeah. The partners are looking at him. So these are certain kind of skill sets for a team to look at if they are to choose from one of them who is supposed to be our business leader, who is supposed to be our CEO. I mean, this brings the attention of everybody when you're a business leader. Yeah, exactly. And, and you should have this kind of, uh, 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 the kind of ability to make analysis on different occasions in a given period of what? Time. If it is your team members, you need to take time analyze the way they do things, analyze what is challenging them. Please give them time as you support them. So that's what we mean is that keeping this in mind that we need to give time to our team members as we analyze what are their abilities, as we analyze where are their weaknesses, so that we can have a point to pivot on if we are to retain or to develop. At what stage do we, how, how do we bring them on board? Now, the issue around bringing talent on board yeah. is, uh, uh, we know, like we said, it's a messy problem that is not having really a messy yeah. solution for it. And uh, because we are a startup, yeah. and we think we don't have enough money to convince these people or to you know to motivate them just with the money so we say the kind of approach used for a startup to retain and develop talent is not all about money money shouldn't be the key thing you are looking at for you to retain because if How you look at you? money mm. if you look at money everybody is going to give money even the other companies that are already established will how give you, money how do you bring someone on without convincing them through money i mean look at the graduates everyone is 
I'm, I'm not doing anything for free. People are no longer volunteering as they used to. And this is what we said earlier on is that too much of this kind of retaining and, retaining and development yeah. of talent is in the hands of the founders. The leadership skills of the founders are always playing a, a very big role okay. in, by, 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 by so uh, we want to see them creating an innovative environment that really motivates these people. So, the kind of talent we are talking about is beyond, uh, you know, beyond promising them high salary, but it is so much of how do you motivate them to buy into the real idea of okay. the business, to buy into what we call growing with a business. So, there are various... Uh, uh, there are various methods that can be used, but we normally pivot so much on what we call remuneration beyond salary. Take us through. Of course, there is a, there is a, you can't just bring them without salary. Yeah. But what we mean is that you cannot just convince them or motivate them or inspire them with salary. Because if you take it as an approach that you are going to be using, other people can provide a more better. bigger salary, yeah. a better salary than what you provide. It means so, if, that, if, if that is the foundation, then they are going to be taking them away as soon as possible. So as a startup founder, you need to innovate around beyond salary. How do before, I remunerate my employees beyond, beyond salary? salary. So before you get into uh, the remuneration beyond salary, I just want to remind our viewers, uh, this show is brought to you by Hujas Finance. And uh, a, a quick summary, if uh, I got your ideas correct, we are working to see that the people we are bringing on board mm. are people who are seeing the vision, mm. even if they, they are looking for pay, because yeah. no one comes to work without you know need for pay. Yeah. But they should be able to see the vision of the business. Yeah. They should be able to appreciate and, you know, be inspired. Yeah. All right, then. But. Yeah. Not just being able. Okay. We say the ball is in the hands of the founders. Of the founders. Okay. So uh, some of the methods we always uh, bring on table for the founders of startups yes. is to design a remuneration structure that is beyond salary. This remuneration structure begins with, uh, you know, making these employees part of the business journey, showing them that actually we are do what we are doing is not for anybody. We are doing it for our own what, for our own selves. Doesn't it put us at a risk of them? taking our business um <laughs> like we, we've seen people who have come to work a business get, is, is, get is, to learn something uh maybe the idea is a technical idea or even a service they get to learn something and then all of a sudden you get to hear they they just changed something small with your brand and they, they I mean, rebranded like we say it, uh, it's time it takes time okay but it's a journey you begin so we expect it. those as well so you engage them you involve them in certain activities that really bring a sense of belonging to the company yeah so that they feel that they are not just employees who come to pick the money and mm -hmm. go away yeah so in a startup we use so much of uh what we call the result driven kind of approach when we are motivating and remunerating our, 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 our team members. What is that? What is the result? Uh, the result-oriented or the result-driven kind of approach is where we have uh, people achieving certain milestones yeah. and are given certain things in terms of uh, uh, bonuses, in terms, mm -hmm. of, um, in terms of packages, say health packages, transport packages,
things of a kind. It's not too much of the salary, but there are small packages that are designed to motivate people who have achieved so to for a certain instance, level. We have a team of 10 people in a new company. Yeah. Let's use Eurosat. Yeah. Um, and we've just started. And everyone maybe is getting around 600,000. Mm. Which may not be as much money for others, or maybe we can say 400 because I mean, startup level mm. don't have a lot of money. Mm. And at the end of the month, there is a sales personnel who has brought maybe 30 clients, and the target was 25. Mm. So, th is that the kind of person you're now going to cater for? Yeah, next so time? it is, it is, we are kind, we are, we are trying to look at the type of results that are driven by behavior. Okay. If somebody has tried to, you know, improve one of the processes in the certain business areas we are running. Okay. It might not be sales. Yeah. It might be say, okay, uh, uh, somebody, we have been spending on, on, on something like power electricity yeah somebody innovatively comes up with an idea of how how can we minimize the you know the cost for electricity okay. somebody would say okay now instead of using these desktop computers why wouldn't we you know go for 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 for, for a higher purchase for laptops that we can pay within a year i actually have a service provider who can provide to us that in that way we are going to be spending less on power we are going to be uh, it's going to be flexible for us to work anywhere anytime at yeah. any place by using laptops right yeah. so somebody you know uh, contributes in seeing how does the company okay. reduce its costs okay. right yeah. so those are certain results that are driven by behavior so they, if we are, for example, fully understanding what they are doing, for them to innovate a, a, around. Exactly. That's why we said, as a business leader, you need to give a keen eye to how these people are behaving. How are they driving? How are their results being created by their behaviors? Or in a nutshell, we can say you create around what we call key performance indicators. Okay. So these key performance indicators can give you the ability to, to analyze how this person is improving the company's efficiency in terms of his behaviors. Is it by talking to clients? Okay. Is it by the way they handle clients? Is it the, by the way they discover new markets? Is it by the way they give attention to detail? To the product and realize the gaps so you set around what we call key performance indicators depending on their roles so it is from these key performance indicators that you are going to analyze how are they for example if somebody is, is a support person part of your team how many clients has he supported how many issues have have been resolved in a week right how many customer complaints are still happening even when these issues have been resolved so the more of these issues are solved mm. and there are no complaints the more this person is achieving the more target you results. have given them yeah. so it's going to be easy for you to reward this person on a result-based behavior of how they do their work so that is that is kind of uh, uh bo giving bonuses okay or giving uh, now you can also give things like incentives eh? and what are those incentives are things that you can give to entice somebody to do more okay. for example you could say uh, let's look at you know uh, anybody who does extra hours from the normal hours we work you know he does extra work yeah. we shall really be giving them some small package at the end of the week to support them in their home right because they have taken these extra hours to work on the company activities so we are rewarding them something like a health package 
Okay. So that if yeah, they get it, if seen. if they get sick, mm -hmm. say in a month, they have at least a fifty k to go and use as a medical bill somewhere somehow for their medical issues. Okay. So you are giving an incentive. The other way you can do it is actually providing a flexible working environment, a flexible working schedule. So you're, you're allowing people freelance in your business? Not freelancing, but you are giving them the opportunity to feel free when they're doing your work. You could say, I, 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 really, I really need you here three days. Yeah. The rest of the days work anywhere you want to work from. But it does not take away the fact that they are supposed to do work. So they, they, there should be clear key performance indicators to measure the, the work they are doing, the minimum and the maximum that you can base on to reward them the incentives or the kind of uh, uh, motivation uh, packages you think suit them. Wow. And um, at, at this rate, uh, we are seeing that many of the new talent they they want to just to delve back on that uh, flexibility of time mm. they, they want to be freelancers in businesses does that make sense for a startup to inst instead of bringing them on as employees they keep them as maybe associates uh, startups should be very critical at what kind of working environment they yeah. create because a working a certain type of working environment could either rain you or you could excel with it okay what we need to realize is what type of environment suits us what type of people do i have by you having people every day at your workspace yeah comes with a cost the feeding, the transportation. The feeding, the transportation. I mean, a lot of things yeah. happen. But again, we ask ourselves, what type of work are they doing? Can they really concentrate on this, even when they stay home? Okay. Instead of them using the transport, can they save that transport for another thing? How much time do they, you know, uh, do they save? by merely doing some work at home. home. Yeah. What could be the repercussions, the negative kind of Effects, feedback yeah. mm. if we continue using this method? Are these people good enough at communicating back? Okay. Are they good at delivering as expected? So as you create your working environment, yeah. you try to uh, realize a number of things that would uh, that would you know try to mold what type of working environment is and the type of people you have so part of building talent and development is supposed to be in line with the working environment you are trying to 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 create around your business it shouldn't just come from nowhere yeah. that now you people you can work at home because we are saving this and this and this yeah it should come as something you have discussed as a team that you know when I personally when I stay home I can do a lot because at home I don't I'm need to panic you know and... organizing myself what yeah. what what to come and spend a lot of time on jam and what and what let me have some of the days for me then let me have some days to come and report back okay. so you are providing a hybrid kind of environment for your employee and they come report yeah. come pick tasks report and go back and do so you have provided a feedback loop where these people are supposed to come back and provide feedback yeah. but again go back and work on certain things okay then the other question who are the people uh, among your team members that suit that kind of exactly. uh, flexible working yeah. schedule so you realize all those as a founder and create a package for each of these employees depending on what you think they can deliver and how you have seen their behavioral changes over time oh all right um now uh, about the ones who are staying at the station like what 
what, what are some of the key roles we can keep at, at the workstation? I, I, I might not uh, be so specific. Yeah. But uh, we essentially believe that the business leaders have a key role to play in every minute, every second, and every hour. If you go by the 10-10-10 wow. ten, ten principle, yeah? okay. you realize that every after 10 seconds, every after 10 minutes, every after 10 hours, these business leaders have got adjustments in their decisions. Yeah. They have got another unique way of thinking about the problems and the solutions they are supposed to propose to certain uh, situations. Yeah. Every 10 minutes, there is a certain new situation that comes in. So this, is, this requires them to quickly and flexibly address these issues as fast as possible. So okay. such are people who are pivotal in taking companies' day-to-day -day decisions yeah. are people that actually are supposed to be around working on certain processes that drive decision because we think or we feel that the other team members are going to feed them okay. so somebody who is being fed with information i mean they need to be you know uh have the ability to be in a space where they can make the decisions, the decisions where they can clearly analyze look into the data that is available and then take decisions but there are people who are just given assignments yeah. to work on for a specific project or part of something big and yeah. essentially they just need to provide feedback of what they have done. So I mean, I'm, I cannot be specific, yeah, but people who have roles that require day-to-day -day kind of decision making, day-to-day -day information, day-to-day -day analysis of data, talk about Should people like like the people who are now in our finances in companies yeah somebody who is driving for the finances is at the center of every activity for taking every decisions how much have we received how much are we spending do we have enough money remaining can we do this so if that person is remote it's gonna be a little bit hectic yeah for other people to collaborate with them right okay yeah um, at, at the startup level, we don't normally have money as earlier agreed upon. Mm. What, what, what should be our thinking around uh, opportunities around volunteership? Um, you'll find that uh, the world of volunteership is, is not real. You, you, you mean you can't build talent for me to myself I don't I don't see it real okay because I mean it's very hard for somebody to be in need and then be effective at volunteering uh, you what mean I think to have personal needs and still be effective at what them. I think is that there should be a motivation factor like we said either someone to build their career okay somebody has an intention of building their career yeah. but sees this as an opportunity for them to build their career in your startup yeah or somebody I, I think it is so much of the career development so after all what happens over a certain period of time yeah. and really we have seen some people who are good even when we don't have the money to retain them, but we think they are good to the development of our startup. That's why sometimes we come in with an option of either providing part of equity to them, equity or stock to them, to now become part of the real owners of the what? Of the company. Of the company. But this is supposed to be so much, uh, it is a critical it is a critical kind of method that yeah. needs analysis, need to sit with the Lego people and design a structure around uh, uh, 
a remuneration strategy beyond salary that is based on equity or stock. Okay. So you deeply um, advise on ensuring there is, there is an incentive, even if someone is not working for a lot of money or someone is maybe... Mm -hmm. Exactly. There should here. be something that works as a motivation factor. For them. For them. That is going to put them to be there, yeah. bring their mind there, and feel that they are benefiting from their Okay, from efforts. their sweat and effort. Huh? Yeah. So that kind of benefit they are getting yeah. is actually working as a remuneration to them. Okay. I might have charged you some kind of money. There are very many places where you go and they say, okay, you want to learn this, you want to learn this, we are going to charge you this amount of money. Yeah. And instead of getting a salary, they are charging you because you are coming to what? To, to learn. learn. Yeah. So this person who is coming to learn in an environment, the only pay he's getting now is the knowledge he's getting. Yes. But I don't believe that somebody is just there volunteering. I mean, I don't see it as something that is sustainable for a person uh, to come just to volunteer there and go mm. away. There should be a factor that drives them to wake yeah. up every day and come and contribute something. Alhamdulillah. Uh, our dear viewers, uh, once again, we appreciate your presence and we appreciate the fact that you decide to sit here every uh, you decide to sit in your homes or wherever you are uh, to spare time and listen to the you know insights of you know um, the the different hosts the different guests that we have for you to learn more about Islam and finance um, maybe next time we shall be tackling something to do with the Islamic aspect uh, as yeah. you know we, we pick talent and also how to retain it uh, but we we appreciate your you know your support we see your comments uh, on social media and we keep telling you please uh, keep commenting let us know what have you learned let us know what, what exactly are you doing in your business and how are these small nuggets maybe there are things you already know and somehow you're trying to learn again and maybe reapply in your different uh, projects moving how helpful have they been? So I also want to remind you that we are sponsored by Hijaz Finance, an Islamic financial institution, and you can download the app on the Google Play Store or your Apple Store for you to be able to have your personal account or your business account running uh, in a halal structure of savings, credit, and investment. My name is Nanteza Nadia Malka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eno ye salam TV.